everybody, it's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to the seventh episode of my 2019 special series, 007, A Bondiful Year. If you are new to my channel, welcome, it is a pleasure to have you, and for all of you returning, welcome back. I am so excited to talk about another James Bond film with you, and this time around, we're going to be going into some serious landmarks in the world of the James Bond films. We are officially going into the 1970s with the 1971 James Bond film Diamonds Are Forever. And unfortunately, it is the final film that features Sean Connery, at least in this specific series of Bond films. If you're counting the 1983 film Never Say Never Again, which also happens to be a re-envisioning of the 1964 Bond film Thunderball, then Feel free to do so, but we're not going to be including that in this series. So, in this film, James Bond is picking up right where On Her Majesty's Secret Service left off, which was a pretty crazy plot twist. And now he is stopping at nothing, hunting down Spectre Agent after Spectre Agent to find Blofeld and put an end to him and Spectre. And at the beginning, we get a pretty interesting opening sequence, and then we are graced by Shirley Bassey once again for the opening song and we officially go on to James Bond's new adventure which is dealing with a case of diamond smuggling. There are two specific bounty hunters named Mr. Wint and Mr. Kidd who are picking off diamond smugglers one by one. And while MI6 is trying to hunt down all of these diamond smugglers, it seems that with this new twist, James Bond has to do what he has to do to bring down these bounty hunters and find out why they're killing all these diamond smugglers. So his adventures go from South Africa to Holland to fabulous Las Vegas and through this time he picks up a friend or foe, we're not quite sure, played by Jill St. John, who happens to be someone who is part of the smuggling ring, and he's thinking, using his own charm, that he will be able to find out the secrets that he needs to find out. We also have the legendary Jimmy Dean in this movie, and this is definitely an interesting film because we do find out at the end what exactly is the diamond smuggling, and why these two guys are officially killing off all these other smugglers, and who at the end is really behind it, and wouldn't you know, it's Spectre once again. So, I was excited to see this one, especially considering the fact that this was Sean Connery's last film, but I have to be honest with you guys, I really did not enjoy this film as much as I thought, and I think the reason as to why is because while this does feature some excellent action sequences, it features one of the coolest car chases that I've ever seen. The problem with this movie is it drags, and I think that the acting is absolutely cheesy and cringeworthy. I mean, we get one of the most legendary Bond ladies, at least by name, named Plenty O'Toole, who has a much smaller role than I thought that she had in this film, and the acting is just so terrible. I can't deal with what comes out of her mouth. I was really surprised by that. And it even bleeds into Sean Connery's acting as well. I just really didn't like the fact that this is what we get for the final Sean Connery James Bond film. To its credit, it does have some enjoyable parts. It does have some really great jokes. I also have to say that it is quite impressive to see that the bar was pretty much pushed along with the time in film in general because there's a lot of swearing in this film. Not any S-bombs or F-bombs, but we get some words that we have never seen in a Bond film. As a matter of fact, it just shows you that the industry was changing as the 70s were getting a little bit more extreme, a little bit more gritty, and especially since that magical year of 19. 1967, the world of film was definitely changing. I also have to say I was very impressed to see that the character Felix Leiter got probably his biggest role in this entire film. And another thing that really surprised me was we see these two bounty hunters, Mr. Wind and Mr. Kit, basically hunting down James Bond to put an end to him to because they're obviously being paid by someone higher up. But all of a sudden, when the story continues and James Bond basically finds out that Spectre is behind the diamond smuggling, and they have, of course, more interesting purposes with those diamonds, it's just kind of crazy about the fact that they're suddenly gone, and we really don't see them until the very end of the film, and even then, 
what happens with them is just not something that I anticipated and not really something that I liked. I really thought that it could have been something more. But as a Bond completionist, am I happy that I saw this film? Sure. It's a good addition to the collection. Not the strongest Bond film that I have seen. I really wish that it was a lot better, and that is why I am going to be giving Diamonds Are Forever a two stars out of four. So that's it, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below, and let's discuss Diamonds Are Forever, and I will see you in the next episode. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.